Trading card games are expensive and Flesh and Blood is no exception. Despite how much we might want to defend the legendary cards and the prices of them, it is no secret that some of them are quite pricey. Thankfully, sets like Crucible of War and Everfest have been giving us these wonderful majestic equipment pieces that are still very powerful and are much more affordable than the legendaries. But we don't have too many of them yet and so they only fill a few slots in a hero's equipment loadout. And well, let's just be honest, you probably also just kind of want some legendaries. But how can you afford to buy them when Prism's Phantasmal Footsteps is $190? You want to play old him? Good luck! Crown of Seeds and Rampart of the Ram's Head is what, $400? How the hell are you going to pick these up for cheap? You're not. See, these heroes are at the top of the meta right now, meaning that their best cards are in very high demand. That's why these legendary cards are worth so much. If you want to play a hero that has more affordable legendary equipment, you shouldn't be looking here. You should be looking here. Before Everfest spoiler season, Phantasmal Footsteps was about $130. Still expensive, but much more affordable than the near 200 that it's at right now. And so with her becoming even more popular in the meta, her cards go up in price. But that also means that for the heroes that aren't doing well in the meta, their legendaries are coming down in price. Take Warrior for example. Dorinthia and Bolton are both decent heroes, but they're really not performing amazingly in the current meta. Now Kasai is doing incredibly well in Blitz, but we are, as of filming this video, in the middle of a pro quest season, which is classic constructed. So people just aren't that interested in Blitz at the moment. And so because nobody's playing a whole lot of Warrior right now, the legendary equipment for this class is actually considerably cheap. Valiant Dynamo is a phenomenally good card for one-handed weapon decks. And this thing is only about $95 right now, which is a lot more appealing than 190 And the Brave Forge Bracers? When I pulled that card, Dorinthia was doing very well in both Classic Constructed and Blitz, and so it was about $150. Now? $65. $65. Okay, I just want to point out, like, this card's not any less powerful than it was before. It's just not in the popular decks right now. This card is still really, really good, but nobody wants it. I personally find there are two ways to play budget in Flesh and Blood. The first is to take any hero and just don't play the legendary equipment and don't play the expensive staples. This lets you build decks for probably around $100 at most. Just you don't get the most powerful equipment and those really good staple cards. And for your local armory, this probably isn't a big deal, but if you are looking to compete at a higher level, yeah, you're, you're not gonna get too far without playing some of these better cards. And if you're playing on a very tight budget, unfortunately, this is probably the route you're going to have to take. But the other option fits where I think most players actually are at. I think that most people playing card games understand that decks are somewhat expensive, and it seems like a lot of people aren't really opposed to spending two to $300 on a deck, but nobody really wants to jump in and start spending six seven eight hundred dollars like that's a little bit too much and so the second tactic you can go is just play something that's not top tier pick a hero and or a class that you like and pick up those legendaries while they're not in favor so at the moment you have classes like mechanologist wizard warrior brute and ninja all of these have legendary equipment pieces that are worth under a hundred dollars. Now obviously there is one caveat here. You could buy a legendary piece of equipment, a new hero comes out that is of the same class or uses the same talent, but that legendary piece of equipment is replaced by a new one. So let's say you buy the Brave Forge Bracers, a new warrior comes out and they have a new arm piece that just works better with the new warrior. So obviously this isn't a perfect 100% you're going to get this legendary equipment and it's going to be 100% guaranteed playable in the future. That being said, if a new warrior comes out, you're probably also going to get just new generic warrior cards that might actually buff Dorinthia up and make her more playable. You might still be playing an A or B tier hero instead of the new S tier hero, but you're still going to be able to play a full powered hero that will be able to somewhat compete in the meta. If you're looking to play on a budget, you can't expect to be able to go to top tier events and do as well as you would if you were playing the best heroes with the best equipment. But most of us aren't looking to be top top players we just don't want to go to our lgs and get completely trounced every time that we sit down at the end of the day there's no getting around that flesh and blood is a competitive game and competitive games tend to be rather expensive because people naturally want the best cards so they have the best chance at winning in these events but i genuinely feel it might be a better idea to play a full powered b class hero rather than trying to half ass an s tier hero who might not perform as well without all those specific legendary 
pieces. So if you're looking to pick up a hero and get all the legendary pieces, it might be a very good idea to look at the classes and heroes that aren't at the top of the meta because some of these are really, really affordable right now.